Hi, and welcome to the Nate Game and Other Stuff. Come on in. episode 92 of the knitting game and other stuff it's been a couple of weeks so hi and welcome to everybody new and returning viewers alike I'm Leslie and I'm the host here um, you can find me on Ravelry as pixie knits and on Instagram as pixie 91075 if you're watching me uh, you found me somehow so uh, if you want to see uh, the show I guess Show notes are in Ravelry now. Links to the show notes are on my blog, which is myordinaryjourney.com. Uh, so that's about all of the administrative stuff I'm going to go over today. Um, so shout outs, announcements, general chit chat. Um, it's been so long since I recorded last night or last time. I have no idea what has happened since you guys last saw me. Um, still busy as always and it seems like I never have enough time to catch up and I think that's probably uh, true for most of us. Time management skills not the greatest right now. Um, I was going to record last week but didn't get around to it. was feeling lazy. Uh, today's a nice rainy cold. It turned cold again like yesterday it was hot. Today it's cold. Um, you may not be able to see, you might be able to see it back, back this way, but you might hear like the rain and it's intermittent with sleet and like some of them big fat, like fat, uh, snowflakes. It's really weird. Um, of course we were all hoping that the snow would be over, but I guess it's not. I don't know. So anyway, a lot to get to today since it's been about three weeks. Um, so I'm going to hop right into it. One thing of note though, if you are trying to watch the show and you notice it's acting wonky, I've had um, someone tell me that they were having problems with the show streaming here or there. Um, so if anybody has any issues with the show playing correctly, either on the website, through Blip, on YouTube, or uh, through iTunes, however you get it through iTunes, I guess downcast for those folks that use iTunes or whatever. Uh, let me know. Because, yeah, I I don't know. So, because we're using this new way of um, pushing things to uh, iTunes, and I just want to make sure it's still working uh, all right and everything. So, just let me know if you're having any issues. Um, so, I guess let's get into it. Uh, first thing, the knitting game, ha ha ha, name of the show. Uh, so it's been three weeks, and this version of the knitting game that we're doing, I'm, um, I have enough yarn to now do 11, but only 10 sweaters are in contention. Um, for pick the next sweater that I knit. So I have 10, or now 11, but whatever. Sweaters, quantities worth of yarn and patterns to go with them. And each week that I don't record, that's another um, sweater off the bottom of the list. So the most votes wins. And I have a feeling that if not next week, the week after, uh, not the next time I record, but the re time I record after definitely will be the final. I think next week or next time I record will be the final round so there's only been three rounds it's been three weeks in between each round so today we have to say goodbye to three potential sweaters I mean I'll still knit them but it's not going to be the next sweater that I knit in my queue so right now I'm working on a sweater once that's finished <laughs> um, and I'll get to that kind of grimace in a minute um, I'll do this sweater that wins this knitting game so sit back and relax and here we go all right so um, first I want to announce the folk, the winner, the, the sweaters that are not going to be next up. First was the Harvest by Tin Can Knits. Uh, next was the Andante. It's that like, uh, long blue one. 
And the third, it was a toss-up. I'm not going to tell you with... There was two sweaters that got exactly the same amount of votes, and they were next on the list. So I had to pick between the two. So the one I decided to put on the back burner for right now was the Ditto, and that was by the Barocco Design Team, and I was going to use the Barocco Modern Cotton for that. Because remember, this is not only the sweater you're picking, but the yarn as well, because I already have the yarn picked out for each one of these patterns. So if you like the yarn, one yarn over the other, and you might want to see the yarn used rather than the pattern knit, if that makes any sense, just remember that on your voting. So you're also voting for the yarn, not just the sweater pattern. So the three sweaters that are still in the hunt, we have the Park Slope, and that is by one of my favorite, favorite designers, Laura Ayler. And the Park Slope, just to remind you what yarn goes with what sweater, is the um, Comfy Fingering. So this is Knit Picks Comfy Fingering. It is 75% Pima Cotton, 25% Acrylic. So I figured it had the extra acrylic in there, so that might help it from growing too much and being saggy. And this is in the Blackberry colorway, so if you can't see, it's this really nice, deep, dark, rich purple. Loving it. So, um, this is a, a fingering weight yarn, and it's, yeah. I have 1,744 yards of this. <laughs> I'm a big girl, so I need a lot of yarn. All right, so that was the park slope. All right, and in the show notes, there's links to all these patterns so you can see what they look like as well. So the next one that is in the running is the Bridget Jacket. And I'm going to use, this is Valley Yarns Amherst in the chocolate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry the jacket. I'm going to make it longer because it comes to, it's, it's like almost cropped right at the waist. And I don't like that. So if this one were to win, I would carry the pattern down. I would just make it longer. So this is a nice Aran weight, worsted weight. It really is. It's a, it's a heavy worsted, so it's pretty round and puffy. So I think that'll be really good with the cable work that's in the Bridget jacket. So, chocolate. And then the third one that's still in the running is the Celine Pullover. And that one is um, going to be knit out of this beautiful, beautiful... It is the... Um, Valley Yarns 400, or 400th, <laughs> they haven't been around 400 years. Valley Yarns 40th Anniversary Valley Superwash DK, and it's dyed by Mad Tosh, and it is the forestry colorway. So it's this bright green with um, over shades of like a, a deep blue on top. So it's blushed with the blue. It's this bright emerald, uh, almost like a yellower green underneath. So it has depth. The yarn itself has a lot of depth and layers to it. So here are your three options. You've got forestry. So that's Celine. You've got Bridget Jacket, which is the, um, Amherst in the chocolate, or you've got the Park Slope in the purple. Now, I have a feeling I know someone who's going to vote for this one a lot, and she knows who she is too. <laughs> so, if anybody out there wants the Bridget or the Celine to win this thing, they need to really bring it because I have a feeling Park Slope is going to run away with it. So just saying, you know, if you want one of these two to win, you've got some competition out there. So, and just think also because, you know, they say on American Island, if it's your favorite, don't hesitate to vote because, you know, 
they may not win and how sad would you be if I couldn't knit the sweater you wanted to see right so okay we're gonna move on to the other stuff I'll have the voting up it'll be up till I'm ready to record again and then I'll close it down and we will move on so um, I was I do have works in progress on the notes first but I think I'm going to start off with the finished objects because I have several of them. The benefit of waiting to record longer in between um, shows is I have actual stuff to show you that's finished, right? Because I knit slower than a glacier moves. So, all right, so the first up, and I'm gonna show this, I have, I've had to, had to wait like two weeks to show this. <laughs> and the person that they're for has been, hey, so where's my stuff? And I'm like, well, it's finished, but I have to show it on the show first, so you're just gonna have to wait. So, um, she'll be glad that she gets these tomorrow, because I guess it is Sunday. So, Rosa's socks are finished. So, um, let me see. So, this was the first sock I knit. So, this was the first one, and I can tell because the toes, the toes are slightly different. The toes on this one, I did, um, like, regular increases on the toes. Um, every other round decre um, increase by four until I get to the size that I want and then I start the pattern. So it was just a normal increase pattern on these. What I did different on the second sock though is I adapted the, um, the fish lips kiss heel and turned it into a toe up sock. And I love the way this looks. It is absolutely beautiful. So, um, yes, so the fish lips kiss heel, I am now going to use as the fish lips heel, heel fish lips kiss toe. <sighs> so there it is. Um, and I've already, I've used this method um, on another sock, and I'll show that in a little bit. So Rosa's socks are done. They still smell like orange it's great because i did these in orange kool-aid um they were a, a knit pick sock blank that i dyed with uh, orange kool-aid as you can see so i just did a normal you know just cast on did the toe increases on the top of the foot and along the cuff i have the um it's two by two ribbing all the way up and I think they came out splendidly. So, wonderful, wonderful stuff here. So that is good. So I get to give those away tomorrow. All right, so the next project I have finished is my sock head hat. Uh, I love knitting on the, I, I'm sorry. For me, stocking it in the round is awesome. I love it, I just, I have a ball. Um, I never took this one on the train. So this was not train knitting. This was upstairs in my room knitting, pretty much. So, and I've worn it a couple of times. I'm not really sure if I look great in a hipster hat, but, or in a slashy hat, I think it makes me look like a hipster, especially with the new glasses. Um, so it's kind of funny <laughs> when I wear it, because I do look like a full-on hipster. Um, but it's very nice and warm and I love it. Just love it. It was a breeze. I would definitely do another one of those hats. And the last thing, oh, um, I guess I should tell you the yarn. So the yarn was Pagewood Farms. It's the Denali base. Um, and it's in the, um, Indian corn colorway. So, and I really do think it looks kind of like Indian corn. It's really quite nice. Not a lot of pooling or flashing or any of that stuff, just a little bit here on the stockinette portion, um, but not too much to take away from the rest of the hat, so nothing weird with that. So. All right, so the last thing I have to show you is a loom scarf. So I knit this on a loom, on a knitting loom, peg loom, and um, the loom was meant as a gag gift, a joke gift for my sister-in-law at Christmas time. Um, little does she know, I take all my tools very seriously, and I do use them. So, here is my 
peg loom scarf. It's on the shorter side, but that's because I didn't have a lot of this yarn. This is um, three Irish girls. Uh, I can't remember. I think the yarn is Pippin and the colorway is Beijing or something like that. But it's this really interesting thick and thin and it, it's really soft and puffy. It's a merino. So it's a very bulky in places and it worked very well for the, the loom. So, um, and I like the colors. It's blue and the little tuft of or like cantaloupe orange. And it works very well with the purple and the green. So, um, yeah. So I've worn this with the uh, sock hat, hat, as a matter of fact. And it's a, it makes a really nice, more like a collar rather than a scarf if you double it over and bring the ends in to the, the loop. It's like a, um, a collar. It fits right, right nice up against your neck. So it's very warm, very, very warm indeed. So three finished objects, yay for me. Um, so yeah, all right, so next up, what am I working on? I'm working on a lot, so I'm gonna be reaching over this way, so bear with me. The first thing I'm working on is the Stoker Pullover. So this one is the Cascade Venetia yarn. This is the front. And uh, I've worked the shape, de uh, the waist shaping, so the decreases and the increases. So now all I have to really do is um, knit up to the armholes, and then I'll have to do some uh, neck shaping for the front. And I'll have to do some math because I cast on more stitches than what it calls for in the pattern. Um, because, like I said, I'm a big girl, and I want to make sure it's not weird all around my waist. I like my sweaters to go down to my hips, so um, I knit it a little bit longer than the pattern also calls for. So those are a few of the modifications that I have made. But, um, all in all, the pattern itself is really nice. It's very well written. There's you know, sometimes we continue on, what do you mean, how do I continue on in pattern? Um, this one is straight stacking at, so you don't have anything, issues like that to worry about. Uh, and it's very well, like, where you have to do your increases. And it gives you examples of how you can do modifications yourself. If you want to make it longer, if you want to make it wider, if you want to use bus starts, um, and things like that. So it's really an easy sweater if you're looking to be a little bit more adventurous and, and make it very customizable, a very custom fit sweater. This is probably a really good one to start with. Now, that being said, I haven't gotten to the cowl piece yet because it is a cowl. I'll knit, end up knitting the cowl. I'll put the pieces together. So I knit, this one is constructed with, you do it in pieces. So you do the back, then you do the front, then you do the sleeves, and then you put it all together, and then you knit on the, the collar, the cowl um, part afterwards. So we're gonna have to see how that goes. I am not the greatest when it comes to picking up stitches, and yeah, so. Uh, I think most of the sweaters and the, the knitting game, um, except for maybe the Celine pullover, are all, uh, pieces. I like pieces really, I think better. Um, gives me more control on how it looks. I think, I don't know. So, but anyway, um, I'm knitting these on my, uh, size. I don't even remember size seven chow Gu interchangeables. And like I said, this was my, um, cascade Venetia and this wonderful, like, uh, turquoise colorway. And this is in my brown dog bag with a little sheep on them. So, good stuff there. But I haven't really worked on this one in a few weeks, and I'll get to why there. It goes along with my grimace earlier. So, alright, so that was the stoker pullover. 
then my April scarf in January. Well, it is now almost April, so maybe I should change that to my April scarf in April. Um, it's just the same old, same old. Um, this is train knitting, but it gets a little bit uh, cumbersome with carrying the colors and having a two-color uh, scarf. But as you can see, it's grown a little bit. I don't have a stitch marker to show where I, you know, spoke last, but I probably have added two sets of repeats. So how this works is um, the pink is Miss Babs, Maryland Sheep and Wool 2013. And I have four times more of it than this white, which is Drops Fable. So I do 12 rows of the pink, and then I do three rows of the white. And when I say rows, it's out and back, out and back. So 12 sets of rows for the pink, and then three sets of rows for the white, because three times four, because I have four times as much as 12. So, you know, math. Knitting is great for math skills, so when I run out of the white, then I know I'm going to run out of the pink and vice versa, so I need to wrap it up. And I can weigh them to see how far along I've come. So these I'm knitting, I'm using size 2, so not it's not going to be really open lace, it's going to be pretty dense. So size 2. And these are in my um, Knitting's My Bag bags. My Frosty, my Every Snowflake is Different bag. My winter bag. So it travels very well on the train. I love it. So there we go. That's that one. All right. And then I decided, because I liked that toe so much, doing the Fish Lips Kiss toe that I would pick up my uh, shutdown socks again. So that's what I'm doing. I have my shutdown socks going here and I cast on the toe and I'm knitting on the foot. It's going to be the same pattern as Rosa's socks. So I'm doing the 2x2 two two rib on the top of the foot and I'll do it along the cuff. Now I already have one of these done and I <laughs> Talk about second sock syndrome. I started them obviously in October when the government shutdown was going on. And I finished it eventually. Um, I think I'm going to rip it out and do it again in this style because I really love the way Rose's socks came out and I'm loving the way these socks are coming out. So um, I don't think I'll have enough yarn to do two of these just straight up and just keep the third sock. So I'm going to have to rip out the third sock. But you know what? Hey. That's why I knit, you know, yarn can be shaped and reformed as many times as I need it to be until I get what I really, really want, right? So um, this is, um, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to sound angry. My German is horrible. So it's um, uh, pirate yarn in German. Pirate, pi pi well, I don't know. But uh, it's not really a self-striping yarn so much, but I... If you see, like on the toe, it's very variegated and wonky. But when I got into finishing the, the toe and into the actual foot, it stripes with that pink, the pink stripe here. And in between is the yellow and the blue. And then the pink and then the yellow. But it's like a corkscrew pattern. It is the kookiest thing. But it looks so cool, doesn't it? So these are I'm doing on size zero, the fixed chow goose, because I think I like the smaller needles for the um, for my socks. I think I think they fit better. So I'm doing those, and here's the yarn. It's still I I have quite a bit left, so um, it's all still kind of caked up. So that's train knitting, and that's in one of my early bags. This is a prototype, so nobody gets this one. This is just when I was messing around, when I was learning to, how to do zippers. I was practicing my zipper work. So that's that. Then, okay, so why the grimace, why the sigh? Um, I have become temporarily a monogamous knitter. 
So hopefully I'll have something different to show you. I have been working on this project now, um, and it's the only thing I've been working on now for about um, two weeks. This is the Dew Drops Shawl. I am now on chart two. It's a free pattern. Um, and I am knitting this out of, I, I picked this up at the Virginia Be Beach Retreat. It's the Madeline Tosh uh, lace, Mad Tosh lace in the butter. And I'm pulling it from the outside just so it doesn't knot or anything on me because it is lace. So uh, there's 950 yards of this and hopefully I haven't screwed myself because there are instructions on how to resize it to make it bigger or smaller. There's a couple of options and ways to do that and I chose to make the stockinette section of the shawl larger. So I'm hoping that in the grand scheme of things that didn't screw me up. There's one little boo-boo here where my stitch marker moved and I got this wonky yarn over off to the side and then there's extra stitches where the yarn over should have been right here so everything had been shifted over yeah so but uh, I do this on the train I'm able to do this on the train right now it is pretty simple so far um, so I am on chart two I am knitting these on of course Chagu red lace these are my interchangeables and these are size US 5's uh, 3.75 millimeter so the reason why this is my like monogamous knitting right now is my brother's getting married at the end of April and his fiance at my sister's wedding I noticed she wore shawls all like for all the wedding events so I'm like well she already I already know she likes shawls right because she's worn them she was wearing them and I asked her at the wedding you know what is your favorite color and she said happy yellow so I bought this specifically with her in mind for a shawl and um, it's not something that she'd wear in the wedding but I want it to be kind of like an extra little wedding gift so um, I'm knitting that for her and I want it to be done in time to take up for the wedding which is at the end of April so until further notice until I get this done so there's six charts so I'm on chart two yeah I got a ways to go but I it's coming along pretty easily and as long as I'm if I'm knitting that's what I'm going to be knitting on until it's time to go so that's what I'm working on I talked about what I had finished so I do have some stash to show um, this week my yarn box shipment came you may have seen their ad in um, interweave knits and that's where I saw it you can go to yarnbox.com and sign up it's a yarn club and it's really been interesting um, I had this is my hat this is a yarn box shipment so not only does it come with um, the yarn but it also has free patterns that you can choose from usually there's one that's a crochet pattern and one that is um, a knit pattern to choose from so they have featured designers that have patterns that go along with the yarn and if I crochet this cow looks amazing um, I think that would be the nesting cow would be really enjoyable um, and this is the Springer hat so um, yes so this month's shipment was quite interesting um, it is a new yarn I've never heard of this company before it is called um, Sidgart and um, I believe it means um, Selk Garden in German it's a Swiss company so I'm guessing all their yarns are mostly you know silk content this is um, their uh, Flauschig base which is 50% silk 50% merino and 
it is a worsted weight. So it's a really thick wool and um, silk blend. And it is in the most fabulous turquoise color ever. You know, not like I don't already love this color uh, amazingly anyway. Um, it's called, I can't pronounce it. I don't, I don't. Bausch Bummel, B-A-C-H-B-U-M-E-L-E. -E. It's a rich teal color. So I get 273 yards. It's a two-play worsted weight, um, and it, it is beautiful. It is wonderful. I really, yep, yeah, one of these days, one of my projects will be using this. So, and another thing I received, I got an early uh, anniversary gift for my husband. Uh, next month, our 20th anniversary, wedding anniversary, uh, we'll be having that. And the 20th anniversary, some of the gifts, um, traditional gifts, are paper and china. And then um, contemporary gifts are platinum, and the stone, I believe, is an emerald. So lots to choose from so the paper part he already took care of because he got me a new book and i have to tell you i thoroughly enjoyed reading the foreword and the introduction um in this book and i usually don't but because this was such an interesting concept to me i wanted to get inside the designer's head and try to understand where these concepts were coming from so i received soulful socks knitting from the ground up by Betty Salpicar, Salpicar, Salpicar. So she's originally from Iowa, um, but she's got an interesting way to construct socks. And my husband knows that I love sock knitting and he thought this would be, I'm always looking for new construction techniques and new things to learn while I'm doing my knitting. So he bought me this, um, book and I thoroughly enjoy it. There's one pair of socks in here for sure. I cannot wait to knit. I will see if I can find it really fast. So I'm not doing a bunch of dead air. What's really interesting about these socks and I, I think I can tell you this part um, is the construction is a bit different in that you can knit the soles and the sock separately and you can pre-knit soles out of like scrap yarn you may have and then pair it with the yarn for the top of the foot and for the um cuff later all right so this is called fairguile oh my gosh don't oh. yeah this is don't you just love the way that looks that is amazing i can't wait and, you know, I'm not a big color work person, but I'm sorry, I just, I saw these socks and I just thought it was like, yep, those are pretty cool. So, soulful socks. Really good stuff. So I have that. I got that. So that's it for the knitting. So on to the spinning. So, um... I'm, ha I, I'm doing a project right now. So I finished up my sugar maple, my faux cashmere from Wild Hair Fiber Studios. Um, so I had, this is the true three ply. So I had, I spun up three bobbins worth of uh, the singles. And then I did a three ply, and that's this here when I plied it together. I have no idea how much I have, so I haven't taken it off of the bobbin. I'll probably do that later today as far as yardage, so I don't know. But then I had quite a bit left over. I had two bobbins worth left over. So what I did is I um, made it into one long single, and then I Navajo plied this one. So it's still a three ply, but it's, it's a Navajo ply. So, I might be able to do something with the two of them together. I don't know. But, I, you know, I have a fairly good, a decent amount. Um, these can make good mini skeins. But the, it feels so soft. 
but I'm finished with these so on to my next spinning project so I have a drum carter and I got it when I first got my spinning wheel but I don't use it a lot and my husband was so kind to remind me of that fact so I decided uh, I would do some drum carting of some of the roving I already had some of the top I already had and I was going through my stash and I found these two braids that alone I wasn't necessarily head over heels with the first it's um, by Nitty in color I got it when I was in the trifecta of awesome um, club and it is it's like dark elves in Norwegian. I can't pronounce it. Like Drakkar or something. So it's um, bamboo, silk, and merino. And it's these greens. And some of the greens have this like almost a broken into a yellow. And there's some darker spots of green. So it's very green. And then the um, bamboo doesn't take the uh, dye like the silk or the wool does so you've got these streaks of kind of like silvery gray through here so this is braid number one so the next braid is from into the world actually and it is uh, mithrin deer and it is green and grays and darker greens and so a lot of the colors repeat or, or similar so separately I was not I'm like what am I going to do with this I don't really I'm not necessarily going to knit anything out of what I spin out of this because I'm not in love with the colors I'm not in love with how you know they just look didn't get me excited I was not excited and I mean that's the whole point of spinning is to be excited right you're going to get something exciting in the end so what I've decided to do <clears throat> is to card them together so I'll pull off a little bit of each and layer them and I'll put them through the drum carter then I take the bat off and I break it down into strips and I even them out and I card it again so I'm only carding them twice because while I want some blending I don't want them to necessarily be muddled and what you come out with or what I come out with is this beautiful it is like a soft mossy really lovely like it's like a f bed of grass a valley of grass this big fluffy bed uh, it is so gorgeous and now I wish I had enough of this stuff to do a sweater's worth in because it is spinning up amazingly I have it on my wheel right now and it's it comes across as this beautiful beautiful green and it's just did I say beautiful 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 really amazingly beautiful <laughs> so um, I'm spinning it thicker usually I spin really really thin try to get very thin consistent singles this time I'm trying to get a little bit thicker uh, thicker singles and I want to do a two ply and I'm hoping it comes out like a two ply Aryan weight um, almost a bulky weight so I can do uh, a long cowl with it because oh did I tell you what the fiber content of the into the world was oh I'm sorry it's superwash merino uh, cashmere and nylon so the bats are merino cashmere silk bamboo and nylon can you say uber yum oh my it's beautiful 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 really beautiful did I say it was beautiful because I mean it really is I mean it's a pleasure to work with so I'm making these little bats and what I do when I spin them I don't know where my other one went when I spin them I spin them I just keep them like huge Rolex I mean it's like a huge Rolex so I'll just spin it from this end down and that's how they come out and it oh my gosh it's been so nice I can almost long draw with this almost I'm still not brave enough just to let go I mean really what's the worst it can do you know it would just keep breaking my single if I had my tension on too tight so I really should practice that but I'm not brave enough yet 
So that is what is on the bobbin. I am so pleased with that because it's beautiful. So, and then I did get an installment of my Into the World. I have so much of the Into the World, it's crazy. This is uh, 8020 Merino Silk Blonde. The name, the colorway is What's This? And this is pretty, pretty rainbow. So, yes, pretty much a rainbow. You've got red, orange, yellow, green, purple, pink, violet, I guess. So, um, this one would be good. I have some other, like, uh, very uh, similarly cover, colored roving from someone else. I think it might be, um, I can't remember. Oh, who did it? It was Little Fishes. The same... Oh my god, it's where I bought my wheel from. She's in Maine. And it's not Highland Handmaids either. Oh my gosh, I... Blank. But anyway, a lot of primary colors. So what I might actually do with this one is break them down into the different color components on each braid and um, do them together into bats of the different colors. And I might spin them in one long color progression. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, spin them in one color progression throughout and um, do a Navajo ply and do a shawl. Oh, so, hey, that's an idea right there. Okay, so I guess that's really all I have this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, next week, next time I record, Sam, you, I really wish I could record every week. Um, I miss recording every week. I was reflecting earlier today that this year has been kind of crazy. I uh, started a new job last May, so I'm coming up on a year in my new job, which is not new anymore, I guess. Um, and I really, I have lost touch and... <laughs> There's this knitting retreat coming up. I don't know. You may have heard of it. It's Zombie Knit Apocalypse. It's coming up in June. It's only like 80 days away or something. I am horribly out of touch with everybody. My roommate, she's like the point of contact. Um, and I I know nothing. I think I might show up and I, I'm going to step off the plane and it's going to be there. And I just, I'm going to be in a flurry of activity. Um... Yeah, so I am just kind of going in also several different directions. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that I'm doing with the guild right now. Um, my co-vice president is now president, so I'm the only vice president. So I do the vice president stuff and the website stuff, which... And the publicity. I'm supposed to be doing publicity and keeping track of all the stuff. It, it's a lot. And, um, yeah, so... With that don't forget to vote my hair is a mess today I feel like it's just um, but that's all I got so I hope you guys enjoy come back don't forget to vote because uh, this round I think is going to be crowning the champion for this uh, knitting game so it's going to be really important that if you want to see your yarn win if you've got a favorite so don't forget you've got if you if you have a favorite yarn or a favorite sweater don't forget to vote because there's only three left. So I'm going to be crowning the winner the next time we record. So it's very, very important that you vote. So, alrighty. And I'll have birthdays and new folks saying hi and all sorts of good stuff next time I do record. Um, hopefully it'll be in two weeks because then I might have something extra special to show everybody that I'm very excited about. Um, April 11th is going to be a very big day for me and I am so excited. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Um, yes, as you can tell, right? I start thinking about it and big smile. All right, so everybody, um, I hope you have a good couple of weeks. Uh, enjoy your knitting and your spinning, and hopefully uh, your springtime is uh, coming along wonderful. If you happen to watch me in the southern hemisphere, I hope you're enjoying the beginning of your fall. Um, or I wish I was on your side of the world because I like the cold weather. But not too cold. It got cold real fast. I don't know. All right, so I'm yapping, yapping, yapping. And if you're out there and a podcaster, I haven't watched anything in so long. I just, 
yeah that cold really took a num took a lot out of me a couple weeks ago and I'm just starting now to catch up with everything and recover so that being said thank you for joining me don't forget to vote and I'll see you guys later all right love you bye